public speaking and mastering of ceremony. We are focused, as I said before, we had, and she said that the first enemy you have to conquer is your nerves. The first enemy you have to conquer is your nerves. Conquer your nerves. Hey there. Hello. If any questions, please drop it and then we pick it up from there. I said the first enemy you have to deal with is your nerves. Your nerves, your nerves. Why is your nerves so important? That's a major challenge we have. The first enemy you have to deal with is your nerves. As I said, why is it important? Because many people, are, when you, once you can conquer your nerves, once you can conquer your nerves, then you conquer everything. Once you can conquer your nerves, you conquer everything. That means once you can get over the fear of the crowd, the fear of the crowd, the fear of the crowd. You might be distracted by unruly crowd. You might be distracted by unfriendly crowd. You know, an audience you've never met before. You come in, some people are looking at you and it's like you're overwhelmed. So once you're able to master how to deal with that, then you are on your way to being a great speaker. So now, the first thing again is that once you master the what do you do? Know yourself. There's a quote here I like to do for it. Says the quote says, All the great speakers, we are world's bad speakers first. All the great speakers you see or you hear, you hear, they are world's bad speakers. Like I said, none of us were born speaking. If you have a child that is born and the child starts speaking, you run away. So none of us, we are born speaking expressly to the public. So we learn speaking in public by, you know, we start learning and practicing it and we do it. No one is born speaking, we all learn speaking. And so that's very important. So nervousness can stop you from trying. You are afraid. It can stop, in fact, it can freeze you. Nervousness can freeze you. And once it freezes you, your voice is affected, your face is affected, your courage is affected, your presence is affected, your delivery is affected. So mm. once you can master your name, yeah, no, and also realize that you are, if you want to be a great speaker, you must know that once, or, once the great speaker succeeds today, once upon a time, you are also a bad speaker. What it means, even if you're not the best, there's no problem. You are on a journey. All you need to do is keep doing it, keep practicing, keep improving yourself, and that's the way to go. But by practice, we practice a small training, practice, training, then you can speak better, you can pronounce your words very well, which you call enunciation. I'll talk about that this later. Then you assume, you now begin to see yourself 
during speaking to large audiences, unfamiliar audiences, and then making impact, delivering your message as effectively as uh, you know, any, any master going to do that. Now, the thing you need to know, one of the first things I want to do is that you need to listen to yourself. Listen to yourself. Everyone has speaking faults. Listen to yourself to identify some of your faults. Now, for example, do your statements make sense? Are you saying exactly what you mean to say? These are some of the questions you will ask yourself as a speaker. There are private questions, so much people can hear you. People can hear you and then be able to follow you. Now, also, when people, when you are making a presentation and people ask questions, do you answer questions directly? Are you able to understand the questions and then reply them effectively? <coughs> so these are things we are going to be covering in this course. Because see, as I said, the public speaking is a big, is, is a big field. There are different dimensions of it. I'm going to be taking them one step at, at a time. Now, but before then, let me explain to us what I call the qualities of a good speaker. Because when you know these qualities, they will enable you to use them as um, a gauge to know whether you are on track or you're not on track. It was called the qualities of a good speaker. Number one, that's what we call a carrying voice. A carrying voice. What is a carrying voice? A voice that can project, a voice that can be heard. I talked about it in a few ago. A speaker, you need to be heard. If you're not being heard, then you're wasting your time. You need to have a carrying voice, a voice that has a one and a whole she's gonna have the size too. Quickly, the sister and I'm the second minute. There's nobody should come there. And no one hearing you or hearing what you are saying. Close the door. Okay. Tell me of something at you. Okay, that's another chance. The third chance, that's why I'm coming back. Please. Okay, I'm please. So, a carrying voice is the number one quality of a good speaker. You must have a carrying voice. The next thing is that you must be confident, have a confident appearance. Now, the thing is, if you exude confidence, if you exude confidence, you come. In other words, if you command confidence, then you make it easier for your audience to. Tell me. So, um, I said you need to have a caring voice. You need to have a confident appearance, and you also need to have a well-researched topic. As you, know, you are invited to come, you need to research your topic very well. This is important because by the time you finish your presentation, there may be questions. The audience may have the ability to ask questions. So if you do not know your topic very well, when questions are asked, you will not be able to answer them effectively. So you need to research your topic very well and then be thoroughly mastered in your topic. Now, I'm talking in terms of the fact that you are invited to be a guest speaker, you're a public speaker, you're invited to make a presentation, you need to recite the topic you are going to be speaking on, do background research, and be very well acquainted with that. Of course, the next important attribute of a quality of a speaker you must have, we are a smile. You know, the smile will win you an audience, will win you an audience. Smile is infectious. It has power. Smile to the audience. When you say people are start laughing at them or laugh with them, but smile. Smile with the audience, to the audience, because smile will them, it, it will endear the audience to you. It will endear them. Remember, except you are able to carry your audience along, then you have you are wasting their time 
There are a lot of things we need to do carry over this alone. Number one, you need to have a carrying force. Number two, you need to have a confident appearance. Number three, you need to be sure that you, are, you have a topic that you start very well so that when you start, they can listen to someone who's speaking from a point of knowledge. And also, you need to smile. Okay, because smile helps them to be drawn to you. And of course, an ability to appeal to the audience. See, different audiences have different things that appeal to them. You need to appeal to their sensibilities. You need to know the kind of audience that you have, things that will excite them, things that will make them sit on their seat edge, you know, um, be, comfort, be, be, be conversant with the, the, the kind of audience that you are going to be talking with. Now, I'll talk about that when we speak about if you're invited, what are the questions you need to ask. So you have an idea of the kind of audience you're going to be speaking with. So you can prepare ahead of time to know how to you know, be at peace with them. Of course, you need to have a sincere approach. You see, you need to be sincere. You know, sincerity shows in your voice, it shows in your courage, it shows in your mannerisms. If you're sincere, sincerity means that um, you admit that, look, even though I'm speaking as an expert, but you also know that you don't know everything. So the, the, the audience need to know that they are listening to an expert, expert but they also need to know they are listening to someone who is not perfect. So you need to be sincere. Now, as I said, it shows off in the way, the moment you start speaking, your sincerity, people begin to notice it. They begin to think whether this person is sincere, whether you're faking. It even shows in the, the way you pronounce your words, whether you're speaking, as, speaking your, phonet, your phonetics, whether they are important phonetics, whether they are yours. So the, one, the audience need to know. They need to identify with you. And of course, what you call fine use of language. Fine use of language. That is, you need to use the right words to say exactly what you want to say. Fine use, that means therefore, that if you really want to be a public speaker, you need to master your medium of communication of course is English. So you need to be very good in English. Spoken English. There's a difference between spoken English and written English. So you need to um, use the right words to say the right things. And also learn how to use what color words. Words that paint pictures. Words that paint pictures. Because if you're speaking to me, we are human beings, we are we, we take in pictures. You know, when you're speaking to people, you need to paint pictures to them. For example, if I tell you I came to this venue with a Lexus black, black Lexus. Moment I mention that your mind goes to black, your mind goes to Lexus. You may not have seen physically, but because we are pictures of, 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 of pictures, you take in pictures, your mind goes to that. So when you're speaking to the public, try to use words that paint pictures that, that enable them to think along with you while you're speaking with them. That way you carry them along. Okay? Also we call it the power of persuasion. The power of persuasion. The power of persuasion. The power of and what does that mean? It's very important if you must refute, if, for example, persuasion by if you have finished speaking and someone is asking a simple what you have said, or seems to yes, seems to contradict what you've spoken, or the topic you're presented, you need to be you need to have the ability to persuade those who have been antagonistic. Persuasive capacity is important for you as a speaker. Lawyers know how to persuade when they argue their case in court. You do that deliberately, you do that in a firmly without being insulted or you know, so it is an attribute that a good speaker, public speaker, must also have. That's what we call um now. You don't speak to an audience. You don't speak to them. In other words, you don't speak at them. You don't speak at them. 
you speak to them, you speak with them. You don't speak down on people, you don't address people now, you address them all. So, again, what call precise timing. If you are given a slot to speak for 10 minutes, please do not speak for eight minutes. If you are invited, you're going to be speaking for 20 minutes, speak for 15 minutes or 70 minutes, time yourself. If you are spoken, supposed to be speaking for 40 minutes, speak for 35 minutes. Always learn ahead of time to speak less than the time that you are given. And of course, what you call self-control. You must have self-control. Now, I will stop here. We will come back for the next session. I will give you more of the characters, the attributes of a good speaker, and also take you through what I call a public speaker's do's and don'ts. A public speaker's do's and don'ts. Okay, so we'll continue when we come after this show. Hello, everyone. Hello, are you there? Fantastic. So, I got a short break. I want to take it and come back. And then, as I was saying, one other aspect of a good speaker is what I call attention getting man. You need to get attention. What's that? Attention getting manner. If you are invited to a stage, you walk confidently from your position in the stage towards the audience. You start up confidently when your name is announced. Now, this is when you are going to be the guest speaker, not when you're the MC, because I'll talk about MC later. When you are announced as the guest speaker, you stand up and walk majestically, as you say, to the podium or to the high table or whatever place it before you. you know, that is very important. Okay. There's what called sense of audience reaction. You must be sensitive to your audience. Know when they are getting tired, when they are getting weary, when they need to prop them up. You need to be sensitive to your audience. If they are getting tired or getting weary, you need to know. And there's something you need to do. 
depending on the kind of audience you have, sometimes you may do one and then exercise just to ginger them, or you may crack a joke, or you may say something that's abstract, that is not immediately related to what you're talking about, just to distract their attention for a few seconds so that you can bring them in. So you need to be sensitive to your audience because your ability to carry your audience along is what makes you a good public speaker. You know, and uh, of course, we talk about knowing how to adapt. Occasions might change. You might change your style. We're going to talk about different style presentation styles. You might change your style depending on the situation because things are not always predictable. So, as a public speaker, you must be ready to adapt to situation and circumstances. Let's say you prepare to speak, and then you, somebody got there, the microphone had an issue. What are you going to do? Let's say you prepare to speak and you got there, the podium is no longer it's broken. Something. So you must learn, be ready for any eventuality and still maintain your cool to deliver your message or to speak without being distracted. You are the one that is sent about it. So you wouldn't allow yourself to be distracted. Okay, so that's that's very important. Okay. So Now, I talked about clarity of speech. Pay attention. Clarity of speech. So that the audience will be able to understand each word. In other words, your enunciation, you are able to pronounce words clearly is very, very important. You must be understood. Otherwise, you're wasting your time and you're wasting your people's time. So that certain words, your voice have to be clear Pronounce your words correctly with vowels where the emphasis needs to be given. And we're going to be talking how to use your voice to generate momentum and to generate rhythm. So these are things you also need to be aware of. You know? So, and of course, one of the most important is the vitality of your presentation. You need to be alive. You need to animate, that means you need to give life to your presentation. Project your sincerity and your want. You need to give vital, give life to your presentation. Don't just sit there, maybe probably behind the podium and be speaking as if you are you are weak, you are tired, and all of that. So you need to add life, vibrancy to your speech and, and your presentation. That way you see yourself, you know, becoming the, 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 you carry your audience along. You know. Of course, finally. You must have the desire to communicate. There must be genuine hunger in your heart to speak to people, to communicate with them, to share your ideas with them. If that desire is in your heart, that genuineness in your heart, it will show even in your eyes. You are excited about your topic. You are excited about being in that presence. Now, remember when you're standing before the public, every all eyes are on you. So if you can inform your audience, you can teach them through your message. If you can also persuade them if there's need be, and you can also entertain them in the process and stimulate their interest, then if you can do all of this in one speech, then you have become what you call you have come with genius to them. That means you're able to entertain them, you're able to inform them, you're able to teach them and persuade them and stimulate their interest. If you can do all of this in one single presentation. Now, remember, this is this is not the message, this is just the what the surrounding, the ambience you create so that your message will be effectively delivered. So, what we're just people call the qualities of a good speaker are the ambience you create around yourself that make it possible for your message to now be delivered. We will not talk about your message until the ambience, if the ambience is not right, the message will not be delivered. If the ambience is not right, who is going to create that ambience? You. 